So, it is the best kind of day because today I finally got my Howard 300 PRC. Now, the license was approved and I was able to collect this rifle. Now, we haven't seen this rifle. Obviously, it comes in this. Hello? Piece of garbage stock. No offense if you shoot one of these stocks, but man, there's some better options on the market. And um, that can head off. Okay. Kind of a test. So, we're gonna do a super fun project with this rifle. Now, today's video is gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna just do some initial loads. I'm not gonna show you guys too much about that because obviously YouTube and making ammunition. So YouTube person, I'm not gonna show that. So be lekker. Okay, so this is gonna be a whole series on its own. I'm gonna pop this guy down and I also got two, two other guns. These have actually been on the channel before. This is the Canic SXF rival. This is the TP9 Elite Combat. Now, today they finally came home. The other time they were here, I had to sign them out for the day because I have competency to trade in firearms for the guys in South Africa asking how I did that. But I had to take them back the same day. But now they're approved, they're here, we're gonna play. So look out for a video on these guys on the channel very, very soon. Three, two, one, boom. By the way, audio is going to be a little bit different on this. You might hear that as I sort of come back and forth because I'm just running a little microphone on the top here. And the reason for that is we're going to chop and change throughout the studio. Um, this is what we're working with. Super, super cool. Obviously, it is clear. There is a little empty chamber indicator on there. But man, oh man. I am very excited for that. And then the black one is over here. And the good thing about this one this one has a threaded barrel, so we can do some, maybe a custom little Warburton for this. Let me know if you guys wanted to see that. But this will probably end up being my new EDC, starting from probably today. Although I need to get my friend Eric from uh, Shinobi Holsters to do a custom holster for me, because I've got a very specific style of how I like to carry. But man, that mag release is gigantic. Okay, more on that later. Okay, Accord uh, IWB for that. Right, so even though both of those come with holsters, I have just ordered new ones from my friend. Now we just need, ha, some ammunition. Right. I suck at shooting pistols, by the way. I've never been really good at it. And fun fact, my shooting journey actually started by shooting pistol competitions. And then I sort of found this long range thing and you know, it consumed me as it's probably done with you if you've subscribed to this channel. So, I'm very much looking forward to spending some time back on the pistol range. And uh, I feel like for us that carry pistols and stuff like that, oh, you guys are a little bit skiff. That's not gonna be our Afrikaans word of the day because that might lead down another rabbit hole. <laughs> I am so bad with interrupting myself. So I'm looking forward to, to sort of picking up that skill again because shooting is very much a perishable skill as you guys know. And I feel for us that carry firearms, you know, EDC, if you every day carry your firearm, you have a responsibility to, you know, know how to use it. Jerry Mitchell like, has a famous saying where he says, if you drive around with a, you know, um, let's say a guitar in your car's trunk for, you know, 10 years, if you're called upon to play in an orchestra or something, all of a sudden you're not going to be able to just know how to, you know, play that guitar like a rock star or, you know, like a, like a symphony type level performance. So the same thing, goes for sort of, you know, carrying a handgun. If you do need to use it under a stressful environment, which is probably gonna be the case, let's be honest, then um, you need to be proficient with it. And at the moment, I guarantee you that I'm not proficient with it. So, my pistol shooting video, you guys are probably gonna just sort of, it's gonna be a similar journey to, you know, how this channel started. And I'm gonna just take you along for the ride. And, um, you know, tell me, tell, you'll basically be able to get my experience as a brand new shooter, effectively, with the pistol stuff to, um, to hear how I like these firearms. So, it's exciting. I'm very excited. Are you excited? If you're excited and you're not subscribed, you can do that down here. Thank you very much. Right, now, usually what I do with a brand new rifle, such as this Howarth 300 PRC, 
I, by the way, picked up a modified case that I can measure the initial jump that I'm going to start off with. Usually what I would do now, and I've just realized that I won't be able to shoot it tomorrow for a number of reasons, but the big reason is I don't have a scope base, okay, to mount on that. But what I'm going to do first things first is I'm going to clean it properly, okay, because oftentimes in the machining factory process, there could be a tiny little piece of metal or something in there and you want to make sure, especially with a bolt action rifle, that you run a cleaning rod through it a few times, wipe out any dirt, any stuff from shipping, any excess oils and stuff that might be in there. So that's the one thing that I'm going to do next to prep that. Then I'm going to see if I maybe have a long action 20 MOI rail from MDT in stock at the store. So if you guys don't know, I've got a store, impactproshop.net, where we sell MDT stuff, all sort of stuff, some of our own stuff, shooting bags, all the lacquer little thingies, and we ship globally. So if you wanted to check that out, that's down here. But hopefully I have a 40 MOI rail. Then I'm going to go to my Optrix drawer, which you guys might enjoy. That is over here. I've just bumped the bin. And let's do that. So optics is down here so our options are we have a four and a half to 27 razor that we could put on there we have a 3 to 18 razor we've got a razor lhd we've got a psd gen 2. oh ooh, i haven't shown you this let me show you this okay this is going to be another rifle that we're building and i have actually chambered this up in the us this is what we call a reamer okay so this is what you would use to cut a chamber with let me see if I can get that to focus. This is a six millimeter SST reamer. Now I've actually, as I said, I've actually chambered up one of these already on a proof research barrel. And I was actually speaking to Bruce at that machine yesterday because he was chambering up another new build. I'm building a custom 308 on a bad TR action. Because who doesn't want a 308? You guys say, Sunbird Pete, your channel's unrelatable. There's always somebody moans in the comments. Well, not always, but sometimes. Your channel's unrelatable, Pete. That's probably how they speak. Because I shoot all these wildcat calibers. So I was like, well, I'll just get a 308. So I'm getting a 308. But this is going to be very fun and expensive to shoot purely because it's going to, you know, eat barrels for breakfast and lunch and all its other meals. But uh, it is also going to provide some lunch because I'm planning on using this as like a little headshot machine too. I don't know what it is with me and building headshot machines, but it's an excuse for a new gun. What can I say? It's part of the part of the journey now. So I'm quickly just going to pull this okey pokey out. And I'm going to clean the bolt and everything and just put my own oil and the lubes and the stuff that I like to use um, on the bolt so that it's sort of a standard. Now oftentimes people ask when they, especially when I'm shooting my 223 Hauer a lot, is people ask, Pete, how on earth did you get the Hauer bolt action so smooth? These actions are pretty legit. Um, Value for money wise, I've always been a fan of the Howards. The way I got it really smooth is a lot of dry fire. So shooting off obstacles and stuff, obviously on a 300 POC. Probably not necessary to have it butter smooth, but if you want to, you can literally just sit in front of the TV and do that for like an hour and it will make a bit of a difference. You can also take a Dremel with a polishing bit, but be careful because if you take off the finish, you might start dealing with rust and sort of other stuff like that. So. There are certain spots you also want to avoid when you're doing that, but any action, similar to pistols even, the more you shoot a pistol, the sort of smoother it gets, so nothing wrong with just doing that thousands and thousands of times, it will make it better. Right, mask and tape, Now I'm going to clamp this up, just like so. Let me know what you guys think of this style of video sort of more run and gun you know sometimes when i film these videos they i set it up there and we've got all the fancy studio lights and the fancy microphones and all this stuff and yes while that video does have a place on the channel it sometimes feels to me like you know i'm producing a video whereas oftentimes i just want to show you something like this is what i'm busy with this is how i sort of set up my rifles this might benefit you when you're going through you know your own process whether it be with you know, the exact same rifle or one of your rifles, you know. So it's something that I've sort of been thinking about last the last while where I just want to show you the journey more than have this, you know, we will still do the finished, perfectly polished videos and stuff, but sort of this, like, this is what I'm doing today. Yeah, it's fun. And they're fun for me to do and they sort of feel a little bit more old school. So if you're an OG, 
then this probably feels familiar. Now, very important, when you're doing something like this, genade, I hit the wrong button on the camera, is, what, crisis? Okay, there we go, everything's good. Is you don't want to, if you can avoid it, just stick a sharp object down a blind hole. Um, you want to use something called a bore guide. Now my bore guide is set over here, and this basically goes into your chamber like this. So when you come in with your cleaning rod, then you're not bumping and damaging potentially your chamber. So that guy goes in there. Again, Mr. YouTube person, we're not modifying a firearm at any point in this video. So just relax, that's a brief. Nobody's ever relaxed off you telling to relax, let's be honest. <laughs> My wife often says that to me. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing this side forward so that that makes maximum contact. And then I'm creating a little bit of space here at the back and I'm pulling this guy back while I'm tightening it in. And then that's always gonna have constant pressure on the front. And then there's literally no movement in this, well, effectively no movement. And that gives me a nice solid platform to work with. This is not gonna fall about. And then if you're gonna use some lubes and stuff, you can obviously orientate this a little bit so that this sort of window portion, if you're using that at all, I don't really use it much, um, so that you have better access to that. So let's tighten that back up. And we are off to the races. I like being organized and I like having my things neat. So a few weeks ago, I fired up the 3D printer and I quickly drew this out. And I've printed a few of these. So if you guys want like a little cleaning rod holder, my thingy, my bobby, that's the official name. Um, there'll be a link to this down below. Um, takes a little while to print, but it's been a nice addition to, you know, just sort of having... I like it if everything has a place. Now, usually on a brand new rifle, what I like to do is I like to take a smaller patch at first, and even this helps on a really dirty rifle. So a smaller patch than you really need per caliber. Just get that first one through nice and clean. You don't want anything getting stuck on that, and then the next ones should go a little bit smoother. Boom, okay, wow, this gusto. Brand new, unfired rifle. That is what you're dealing with. This is all the junky gunky that's stuck in your barrel, so that's no good. So I'm gonna run a few more patches, then just wipe everything down. Make sure alles is moist squin. Okay, Oof, the second one is just as bad. Holy smokes. Now this one was slightly larger than the first one. Let me show you fellas. And ladies, this grows. Also, little economy tip, I actually don't have it here, but instead of buying like the pre-cut, you know, little patches, you can buy these big rolls and it works out so much cheaper. And then all you have to do is take a nice sharp pair of scissors and then cut them down to the desired sizes you need. Um, I sort of split 223 and six millimeter then I split like six and a half and seven millimeter, and then I've got three or eight size ones. But uh, yeah, it's a, because what they charge for these, especially here in South Africa, I don't know if it's bad in, in the US, but in South Africa, it's nuts um, what we pay for, for these lappies. And that's gonna be our Afrikaans word of the day, is a lappie. A lappie is a small cloth. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, awesome. Some of you can't slang for you. There's a saying, like if everything's okay, you can say it's quite lapis, which means it's like, it's almost like saying cool bananas. Anyway, man, you guys must be fluent in Afrikaans by now. Um, at least Afrikaans slang for that matter. Okay, so I'm gonna call that good. Oh, everything looks good. And now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna insert the ball guide back and I'm gonna take a lightly oiled lappi and shove it down there. And then I'm gonna leave it as is, because this is, Possibly gonna stand for like a few days because I need to get my 30 Sherman mag fired up. Which is this beast. Okay, it's got a truck axle for a barrel. I need to get this fired up because we've got a match soon. But you can literally lift weights with this. This, this is unreal. I'm excited to feel what the recoil is gonna feel like on this guy because obviously heavy projectile at a very fast speed, but there's so much weight in this barrel that it should mitigate the recoil to a large extent. My face is like half cut off in most of these shots, which is hilarious. 
but then you won't be able to see the rifle, so it's a bit of best of both. I think the rifle's way nicer to look at than I am anyway. I had to go fix it. It's OCD, too bad. Picky willy keys, I just use this good smithy stuff for this, just a light coat of oil down the pipe and I'm going to leave that oil in the pipe. And that's something that I actually do after every time that I clean my firearms is that I will put, I'll finish with a sort of oil, um, oil lappy and I'll leave it as is. Also I store my firearms muzzle down in the safe so I have them all standing on their muzzles and people think oh, it's going to warp the barrel. My goodness, if that warps your barrel, you've got problems. So this bat bolt, they have actually greased this up a little bit where they need to, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that. So that's good to go with this power bolt. So I'm going to give a bit of a spray down like that. And then get rid of all this sort of cheap, dirty, look how dirty this is. It's, it really is disgusting. But this is part of my hour. It's not going to affect the function. I just want to get it all cleaned up. And um, to my liking, I've got a relatively high standard for how I like to keep my things. I could have gone very wrong, by the way, if I dropped this. <laughs> Would have made for a good uptake at the end. Uh, put some oil, goodness gracious, heavy handed much. Put a little bit of oil on that because this is going to stand for a little bit while, as I said. Might be a day or two. Um, it depends if I, I don't know if I have stock of the MDT 20 MI rail. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give this a light rub with that too. Boom, 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 boom. Lekker. If we're going to let your rifle stand, it does not hurt to um, just have a little bit of oil on the surfaces, especially, you know, I live down here in Cape Town and um, it is near the sea, but I don't live right next to the sea, but you know, things tend to rust, it's the middle of winter, there's a lot of moisture in the air, um, well not really the middle of winter, but it's still very wet outside, we've just had a rainy day the other day, so yeah, just a little bit of oil goes a long way, I should probably take this out the stock and just go under the barrel, but sometimes if we give it one of these, let me do this so you can see again, we should be able to... Uh, <laughs> the old flossy floss. Perfect. Okay, all right. This okey pokey goes back in. And then off to the safe. We go. Now, this cool tactical wall I have here behind me, where you guys always see the rifles on, the rifles never stay there. This room is not a walk in safe. And in South Africa, you need to have a walk in safe or a real safe. So they are always going back in a proper safe. Now, I'm still deciding if. After this whole process, the load development, maybe we'll shoot a match of this or something. Whether I'm going to keep this for the wife or not. Potentially. I've also got a 6.5 PRC which I'm leaning towards keeping and then selling this one. So whatever we do decide to do with it, Strike Eagle, however we decide to kit it out. Keep an eye on this project because it might be unavailable to somebody in the next few months. Okay, so let me show you the difference, by the way. Custom gun, never been cleaned, never been fired, nothing. This is the cloth that just came out the front there versus the one from the Hauer, so we'll do custom rifle. This is the cloth, and I'll have the Hauer floating on this side somewhere. Crazy, literally day and night. All right, so now that everything is prepped, I'm gonna do some initial chamber measurements, but that's sort of where we start stepping over YouTube's T's and C's sign. I wanna do that, but that will be available to you guys. I will take you through the whole load development process or give you the opportunity to watch it on a different platform, so don't worry about that. I'm planning on shooting Peterson 300 PRC brass. I'm gonna shoot these Burger 220 grain long range hybrid target bullets. I've got a couple of thousand of these, which is really cool. Now, today, I also set this up and I loaded some ammo for this. This is my 28 Sherman Mag, so tomorrow, I'm heading to the range to shoot that, as well as the brand new MDT ACC Elite, which is very exciting. I know a bunch of you have been asking, Pete, when on earth is that video coming? And also more specifically, when can we buy that? So there's no real ETA on that just yet, but as soon as I know, and I'm allowed to tell you guys, I'll tell you guys. 
So rest assured. Anyway, if you want to see those videos, make sure you are subscribed. Once again, thanks to our lovely friends at MDT. By the way, there's an entire wall of chassis at the top there. Um, I want to thank them for you know, partnering with the channel and making videos like this possible. So head on over to mdttag.com, shop your next chassis system that 300 PRC is very likely to end up in an MDT. We'll have to see what we can source because you guys keys keep buying them from me. And it's backpowershop.net, shameless plug. Okay, love you long time, bye.